Hey, Steve and Annalie, good morning. It's Rob and Jess. Uh, very sad to see you two go out here so close to the end, but it was a fun ride. Uh, how are you two doing this morning? We're doing good. We're sad to see it in too, but great yeah. to see y'all here this morning. Yeah, I definitely have a little PTSD, I think, for the rest <laughs> of my life. But yeah. <laughs> Could you just start off by telling us uh, how close do you know uh, you were to uh, ending up in third? Within minutes, I don't know how many minutes, but there was just a few minutes that, you know, they showed it last night. I think we came in from one entrance to the park and I, you know, I totally forgot last night we went into the chapel first and I'm just wondering if we hadn't gone in there and the sprint came out, how, if we would have seen Joel and Garrett on the map, it was close. They, we made a couple of mistakes and, you know, the top four teams, we were, they're all good racers. We no, couldn't yeah. make those mistakes. No so. room for those kind of mistakes. No, nope, they got us. Yeah, so Annalie, in this week's episode, um, you had a really interesting reaction when you opened up that first roadblock clue and you saw that it was dancing and that your dad would have to do it. Um, do you think you could have made up any time at all if you had been able to do that roadblock? We were a little upset with ourselves because we miscounted who had done each roadblock. We thought we were even. And so when we read that roadblock in the route up row, it actually said dad had to do it. And that's when we realized, oh no, like... I wasn't, I, we, I wasn't concerned about it. We danced our whole lives. And that's why I, I told the little girl that, that helped me, my good trainers, thank goodness for her. <laughs> when she started hopping around, my whole life, we've been sliding, gliding. And there wasn't none of that hopping. When she started hopping, I said, <laughs> oh, you need to kick the poo. We was like, what? What'd she say? <laughs> I said, oh, no. And it's so funny. They missed out. Yeah. Like, he, he had his lucky SpongeBob underwear on. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, lucky spongebob underwear yes yellow underwear and they were poking out from underneath his little leotard and they failed him one time because of a wardrobe malfunction and he's like <laughs> with spongebob hanging out the side and i'm laughing so hard <laughs> no i'm glad they did cut that out <laughs> that's part of the paramount family that should be in play no yeah, the I world didn't need to see that yes yeah. But Steve, you know, I was really worried about you. Uh, oh, this is going to be a disaster. Steve is going to have to do the uh, Lord of the Dance. But uh, Steve, I thought you did pretty good. I beat Joel out of there, so that's all that mattered. <laughs> I wasn't in last. Yeah, uh, I thought uh, pretty good. Now, would you rather uh, River Dance or go in the cold water again? Oh, I'd rather River Dance. Yeah. Yeah, that cold water was horrible. It was a shock. I couldn't breathe. I said, <laughs> I thought I was smart. I put my water shoes on and they like to drown me. Well, the first thing is nobody offered us a life jacket. Yeah. I'd have taken it immediately. And yeah, we saw them. I, until I last know. night. Yeah, I, I looked at Joel and Garrett's like, they got life jackets on. Where'd they get those? So I missed that. But I was also yelling at Anna Lee when she was saying, come on, Dad. I was saying, let me take my shoes off. They weren't, they played it. It made it sound like I was drowning and I had stopped. When you said Anna Lee. Yeah, when I was going, Anna Lee, Anna Lee, I'm taking my shoes off. And then I use them as paddles. And it was, <laughs> we were laughing because I look back and he's like paddling backwards. I'm <laughs> like, what shoes. are you doing? But it made it sound so sad. Oh, like yeah. it, it made it sound like he was drowning and calling for me for help. And it was not like that. Like, I was freezing. I wasn't drowning. That water was cold. I'm, I don't, I don't have much meat on my bones for all that cold water. <laughs> so throughout the show, teams were constantly talking about how you, the two of you were the team to beat and you were the biggest threat. And Annalie, you're one of the strongest female racers I think we've ever seen on the show. Uh, was that something that registered with you while you were running the race? And did that affect your game no. at all? <laughs> no, no. The only thing that registered with us was sheer panic. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, by nature growing up, I have always been so, so competitive. And after the U-turn and after we like, once we got to that first um, detour and the U-turn, that's when I kind of realized, I was like, you know what, we have every, we have every opportunity to win this thing too. Like we're right here with some of the best teams. And, and I've, I've said it before, we kind of started off just our mindset was don't finish last, just stay in the race, stay in there. Then it, it starts turning to where, hey, you know what, we're doing good enough at these challenges, roadblocks, detours, we can, we can get through those and make up for my speed. If we can and, just get there and stay and get in the front of the pack and stay in the front of the pack. And yeah, you, know, you know, until the U turn, I thought we had pretty good control of that. And even on the U turn, I thought we had good control. We caught that first place yeah. team. If not for a little flub on the clue, then we, we'd have been right there in the lead on, on the, even being U turn. Yeah. 
Yeah. You guys really were doing great through so many of the different tasks. It seemed like that if anything was an issue, it was like getting from the one task to another. Uh, could you just talk a little bit about some of the struggles that you two had with getting from place to place? Our navigation sucks. Well, the hardest thing was <laughs> write down the exact address. Like we would write down exactly what we saw on someone's phone. But what we didn't consider was that it was in a different language. And so when we would, we'd be on a street in Germany and it, we would be looking for a certain street name, but it, it might be totally different than what was on their phone. And so we didn't account for that. We would just blow right past the street and get stuck somewhere having to ask 10 people just to realize we were on the right road the whole time. We just, it didn't, it wasn't the same road. We finally did put two and two together and start watching the old Dahmer. We'd look at the kilometers. And we wouldn't even start looking for these streets until, you know, at first it was panic mode. We'd go a mile ago. Is it here? Well, we got 29 more kilometers to go. No. So once we start adding on the odometer, it took a lot of the pressure off and made it a little bit better. But mm -hmm. it's just, it was hard navigation. You saw everybody struggle with navigation. We, we were a little bit worse than other people were and it hit at the wrong time. Yeah, it's I think it's it's partly luck that you ended up in the season where everybody has to do that a lot because last couple they haven't. Um, I would love to know which one of you is the bigger fan of the show and who kind of spearheaded your journey to get onto the show. It was me. Definitely. That one right there. Yeah, I've actually applied before, twice before, and it, the audition tapes didn't go anywhere. It's always been one of my dreams. I just, like I said, I love competing and having the opportunity to travel and compete, which travel is my biggest passion. And so getting to combine the two and possibly win some money while we're at it, I've, I've always wanted to do it. So, and dad's my best friend, always has been my best friend. I've tried to get him to travel with me for years and he's such a Texas boy that he, he well, ain't going. But she's always coming up with stuff. Let's go, let's go pack mules up into the mountains and go out <laughs> for a week he won't do it. I'm not, I can't get away from here for a week so this kind of forced him yeah, I mean it, it he had no choice I kind of went along with the process thinking well this is never going to happen you know they called yeah that's great they saw our, all this that and then it got real real quick yeah he was like what'd you get me into <laughs> yeah, and away we went I said aha but you know what I'm so I'm, I'm proud of her the way that you know she you know I, I, I the oldest guy on the show and then with the littlest girl on there and yeah you know, well, I think we pulled together and gave everybody a run for their money. And that's, we ran a good race I, yeah. you know, besides our own mistakes. It wasn't like anybody else did anything to us. It was, it was all on us. You two had a lot of great moments on the show. Do you two have a high point that you uh, feel like was uh, the best moment for the two of you together? A high point? I, I know, know a what? lot of funny, like some of the funniest moments. I'll tell you, my high point was winning that non prize leg. And yeah. I couldn't believe he got first place and he whips out a clue and says, Keep it. That was the high point, point, Steve. The highest point and the lowest point. Yeah, well, all at the yeah. same time. Well, and what was the funny moment? Um, I think one of our funniest moments was when we were in Sweden and we were doing the barnacles. We both had these wetsuits on and dad was running around like a little fish. And we kept calling each other Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. And we were laughing so hard that whole day, even to the point where he had his little chains going on like this in his wetsuit. And me, the camera guys, the whole production was singing all the single ladies. And it was just such a funny, like, high moment. And it was every single bit of it was not shown. And we were yeah. like, gosh, dang it. You know, that was. That's very was expensive, fun. Annalie, to show all the single ladies. Yeah, oh, yeah. true. <laughs> I'm sure you got to pay somebody. <laughs> uh, so. How has how has being on the race changed your relationship? You were obviously very close going in. Has it changed anything about how you relate to each other? No, I mean that's that's what you see on the race. Pretty much how we've been our entire lives. I mean she she played competitive volleyball for years. I went to every single game. Me and her mom, and you know what? She lived under our roof, and we we've just always been totally involved with each other. There's, you know, but there's we've no... never argued. We never like in real life we're not in situations where we have to argue about navigation. Like there's not that pressure on you to go. If we get lost somewhere in the real world, we just sit down and look at it and talk about it. But we've never been put in a situation together where we've had to like mutually agree like that. Usually it's me calling him or him calling me with a problem. And we're very good with communicating and talking it out. But that was just a scenario that we've, we've Ooh, never been put in before. It was high stress too. I can tell you that. <laughs> 
uh, Steve, with all due respect, a- Annalie, you were uh, just uh, seemingly like the- there was nothing they could throw at you that uh, was like difficult for you in any way. Uh, I just thought that you'd be such a natural to go and participate in the challenge. Is that something that you would consider doing? Heck yeah. I feel like the challenge is it's more welcome to be competitive. For some reason, I feel like I'm too competitive for the amazing race, but maybe <laughs> and they challenge- need the amazing race representation. Yeah. <laughs> I'll watch and support. I'll cheer on the <laughs> sideline. Was there I any think- other show that you'd want to do? I I think both of us would be really good at Survivor. I, I would love to do Survivor. Steve, I mean, I you're up that. for that? I'd be up for whatever. Just all the haters out there. Yeah, but I'd train a little bit. <laughs> I can promise you that. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you want to make sure that people know about uh, your experience on The Amazing Race? I, you know what? It was Like I said, The Amazing Race is the real deal. It was tough. I got to do it with her. And, you know, as close as we are, I, it has brought us closer. And we've got those memories that last us the rest, rest of our lives. And I really don't care what other people think about how it was edited or how it came across on TV. If she pisses me off, then she's going to get the eyes and she knows when to stop. Yeah, it's, it's a quick. She's a lot louder than I am. I'm kind of laid back. But, no, the, the truth of it is I've got a great daughter that I'm very proud of. And, you know, what I'm proud of is what we did. There's nothing to be ashamed of, you know, fourth place. I think we fought our way through it without a couple of mistakes. Yeah. You know, who knows where it could have been. Did a lot better than I thought we were going to. Yeah. And I will say too, that anybody back home who knows us and knows our relationship, all of my best friends are also dad's best friends because they know how close we are. So it's like almost a, it's like a requirement when you're my best friend, you always, everybody knows my parents too. And they know that we have the tightest relationship. I think of any father daughter that I've ever met. And I just, I don't, I don't think people truly about a true depiction of our relationship but we know what it's like and yep. so i'm thankful for that. move yeah. on from here all right well really nice getting to watch you race and very nice to talk to you both today all the best outside the amazing race okay yeah. well we listen to y'all's podcast and thank y'all for we all do. the support through the, uh, through the- Thank you. Podcasts. Y'all always had our backs i th- we thought you were super fun so uh all we the did. best Stephen and Natalie. okay all right take care. bye